So welcome to a special edition of Crave. Uh, today, Steve and I are talking to another local band who are um, got some new music to talk about, and they're still living their uh, creative lives in the middle of the lockdown. The band is Foley, uh, and they are Ash Wallace. Hi, Ash. Hello. And Gabe Everett. Hi, Gabe. Hey. Hey, good to, good to have you on Crave. Thank you for talking to us today. Um, uh, we're here mainly because you've got a new EP out um, with five songs. Midnight is the is the sort of the single that's been released first. Um, Steve and I had a, a good little listen to that, and um, we both think it's pr very catchy pop. Is that a, is that a, let's start with the music? Is that a fair way to describe it? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's we kind of like to describe it as um, like fun pop with a bit of a funk edge. Mm -hmm. I think like Abe especially is a really amazing funk like bass and guitar player, so um, that definitely informs the way that we write. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely pop music. It's um, you know, we're not. We're not afraid of that word. I think sometimes people think pop is like, oh, you know, this bad thing. But, um, but yeah, it's just kind of fun, fun music that hopefully people can enjoy, and especially at the moment when it's all a bit mad. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Hey, so but, Gabe, what about the sort of music that influenced you, that's led you to writing st stuff like this? Uh, well, I'm a huge Prince fan. Um, and I listened to sort of anything around that era as well. So big into Lionel Richie, um, Commodores, all of that stuff is um, my bread and butter. So I listened to copious amounts of it and I just love that music. So I try and recreate it and I recreate it very badly. So that kind of gives me my own style. Um, <laughs> so I was not just directly copying it. Um, so there you go. That's kind of where our, our sound comes from a little bit. But Ash and I are both... Um, you know, musicians in our own right. Like we, we both play guitar. Or we can both play piano. Ash is better than me at that. Um, you know, we, we work on everything as collaboratively as possible. So, so the sound is really the both of us. Cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I mean, definitely. For example, I mean, on songs like you know, uh, "Misbehaving," I mean, it, it, it's 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 like that song was dragged straight out of the seventies, quite frankly. <laughs> and I mean that in the best possible way. <laughs> Yeah. It's great. No, a lot of good stuff came out of the seventies. A lot of good stuff. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, I mean, you, you know, you 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 got that sort of funky sort of um, Prince style guitar going on, which is which is lovely. But even the production is so rich and lush. Yeah, we we were really lucky to work with some pretty amazing producers. Um, Gabe and I both produce ourselves as well, so we can kind of get the the sound to a certain point, and then we've been really blessed to work with some really talented people. The um production duo who worked on Misbehaving and Midnight. They're called uh, Ambien and Sleo, and they're just such talented guys that um, were so patient with us trying to get all the soundscapes right. And, you know, we're, we're very particular, I think. So, um, yeah, so we, we really did focus, I think, across the EP on getting all the production really, really lush and warm and clean and, and really polished because I think it's kind of it's brought all the songs together in a in a to have a commonality I guess. Right. So, yeah. 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 So who, who who's the songwriter or are, they, are we talking about collaborative efforts here? Yeah. So it's both of us. So Gabe and I do everything really fifty fifty. It's um at the beginning of of when we were first writing together. Um, Gabe's a vocalist as well, so we kind of had to make a, a bit of a choice at the beginning. But that's kind of the only thing that's that's really remained like you know me taking the lead on that but everything else is just everything is so collaborative you know and I think that's the strength of it is that there's no there's no majority rules when there's two of you so both of us have got to get on board and um both be really passionate about what we're doing and and that collaboration is is really at the heart of the whole project I think cool and Gabe for that collaboration to work I guess you've got to know each other fairly well do you go back a, a year or two or three with Ash uh, three, four, five. I, I actually have lost count. We don't know. Uh, we can probably work it out, but it's been so many years, like several, several. Um, we met way back in the day doing, you know, um, well, we were in our separate high school bands um, doing, you know, competitions and things. And we practiced in the same space. And, and those two bands kind of became our group of friends. And then years on from that, Ash and I went, hang on a minute. Like we're kind of the principal songwriters of each band. Why don't we write together? And here we go. That was three go. years ago now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it, 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 right. It does like definitely that friendship 
has has led to a really good creative relationship because as as opposed to I think a lot of songwriters come into a room together and you're sort of starting from from negative because you, you don't know each other you don't have that kind of relationship where you can be really honest with each other or you know sometimes that can be really brutal in a songwriting environment like your ideas can get shut down or things like that but because Gabe and I have such a rich history and have so much trust I think there's there's never any like animosity or mm. it's just so much mm. easier than to we're starting from a jump ahead I think because we already know what's going on in each other's lives anyway so it's not like <laughs> it's not like yeah. surprise has been happening which we need to write about so yeah, we're lucky in that regard, I think. Cool, cool. Um, does that mean that it's still better if you're actually physically in the same space to be working all this out? You can't have this idea in this day and age of digital creativity. You could be in you know, opposite sides of the world and it wouldn't matter, but I, does it matter? Yeah, uh, we, we have done sessions where we aren't in the same room and, and we're going to have to try and do that a little bit more now. Um, that the madness of the world has forced upon us. But uh, we definitely, music is such a weird thing to, to talk about regardless. Like if you're in a session and you're trying to describe the sound that you want or, or the feeling, you use all these different words that, that mean nothing uh, without the right context and without you know your eye contact and, and the body language. So um, I think that's kind of the main issue that we find with, with not working in the same room. Um, that being said, like in the background of, of this recording right now, I've been tracking vocals on a song to send to Ash and we'll um, collaborate like that. So yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, but yeah, so it's something we've got to get better at for sure. Yeah, cool. Ah, fantastic. So I, I, I do have a question, by the way. Where, do, where does the name Foley come from? What's the significance of that? I think um, we, when we were first like writing together as a duo we tried a lot of names and nothing really felt right and I think the name isn't cool until you're cool like it doesn't okay. feel cool, right you know so um so we kind of decided that we just needed to to pick something and um and kind of go with it and just see how it felt and we were on a trip um the two of us and Gabe's partner Jade we went on a trip to Vietnam which was awesome and we decided by the time we touched back down in Auckland, we had to have just picked something. And whatever that was, like, that was the name. Okay. Uh, but I think Foley for us is kind of, obviously, there's Foley in movies, which is like that yep. fake, the fake sounds that they overdub. And um, we really liked the idea that, um, you know, our music is kind of like this running commentary of our lives. Like, it's very... It's very kind of word vomit, I guess, of just like what's going on. And um, we really liked that Foley is sort of like us... us making the soundtrack to our own lives, I guess. And um, like overdubbing the sounds of, of our world. So um, I guess, yeah, we didn't think too much into it. It just kind of felt right. And it was like, let's just run with it. And um, we yeah. haven't changed since. So I feel like, you know, it's worked out. Yeah. It's like the most momentous decision until you make <laughs> it. And then it kind of, you, you become the name anyway. So like, it kind of doesn't make much of a difference, whatever you choose. Um, as long as, you know, the music's good. I guess that's the main thing at the end of the day. Yeah. So what's going to happen? Uh, well, we're, as we record this, we're only just over one week into our national lockdown and we don't quite know what's going to happen in the weeks ahead. Um, what's what, we've, heard, we've heard from around the world how some artists are using live streaming to get their music out to their fans. What are, you, what are your thoughts about how, what you're going to do over the next little while? I guess like we've all got to be creative. I mean, everyone's adapting. I think for the music industry, that obviously the live side is a massive part of it, and that's completely dropped away. But the recorded music industry has kind of managed to to survive. You know, people can be at home in isolation and still make music. So I don't think too much changes in that regard. Obviously, it changes your collaborative relationship. Um, but I think yeah, people are just adapting like with live streams, with um, Q and A's with their fans, like trying to make acoustic versions or, or new offerings of content I think we're definitely on board with that it's it's nice to have the time to think of other ways we can connect with our audience outside of the standard the live show and the recordings you know yeah. so I think I'm kind of excited actually for the industry in a weird kind of silver linings way that hopefully people are gonna find creative ways of doing things and I think that will survive long after this is all kind of subsided this madness yeah. you know I think so, hopefully so. That will still continue. 
So, Gabe, you did say that the, even as we speak, you've got something percolating in the background. What are you guys working on right now? Oh, well, I mean, we're always writing. Um, cool. We, we both, as Ash mentioned earlier, we both sort of overthink and overanalyze every decision or, or every part of our lives. So we're always jotting things down on our voice memos or on our notes. Um, the song uh, in focus at the moment is, is a song that Ash wrote um, at, at for his song hubs the other week. And um, she wrote it with a producer, um, Pacific Heights. And um, we're going to, well, hopefully see what we can do with the song. So I'm just tracking some vocals on it. Um, yeah, and trying to match Ash's incredible <laughs> takes that she's done, which is <laughs> very hard. <laughs> um, yeah, but but other than that, like our own stuff, we've, we've got a bunch of songs that we wrote um, over in LA at the end of last year that we're sort of sitting on and waiting for the right time to to produce up and, and we're, we're also writing individually and trying to figure out what the next steps are from the CP. We're definitely leading into another body of work. So whatever we can kind of come up with in this time now is probably going to be what that is going to be themed around. Fantastic. And so eventually, go ahead, oh, sorry, sorry, there you go. Now, as I was going to say, do you see yourselves recording from home, for example? I mean, how's, how's this all going to play out? Do you ever see yourselves getting back into studios? Uh, well, we're both pretty lucky we've got kind of small setups at each of our houses um so we do a lot of recording at home in the preliminary stages anyway and then um we haven't actually spent too much time in studios that are kind of you know massive live recording studios because okay. fortunately we don't actually need too much of a setup with the guitar and bass we can all do that in quite a small space um and we don't usually record live drums so um, not too much has changed in that regard. We can do a lot of it at home. And then I think when the songs are ready, we'll then start working with other producers and kind of go into their studios and, and work with them on on um, the detail and all that kind of stuff. But um, but a lot of those setups are kind of home style setups anyway. I think, you know, the the biggest studios, maybe genre wise, uh, uh, you know, they're, they're utilized for live drums and a live. Right you know those those bigger kind of setups so we're lucky it's a big cost saver for us <laughs> fair enough one, one of the things i was wondering about you when you were just talking about the the size of um the, the instrumentation when you get together um when you eventually um get back out on the road in some form um it's is it just the two of you on stage or do you bring anyone extra into no yes yeah, so we have uh, um we, we bring a band out with us when we play live just because we want to sort of recreate the songs rather than just play along to them. Um, right. So we've got an amazing drummer and an, an amazing bass player that we take out. Um, I'm usually on the guitar and then Ash will be doing the vocals. Um, but we're, we're always kind of experimenting with that. I, I think that the goal is to pretty much be independent from having any kind of backing tracks at all. Um, so we're always kind of, kind of looking to do that or, or, or experiment with that um but yeah I, I guess it all boils down to the the fact that we want to just recreate the songs yeah. um because that gives the fans a bit of a a new experience um we look vulnerable on stage you know we can make mistakes we can it gives it a bit more energy rather than just you know standing up there and singing I th yeah and i was just thinking because um for someone of our steve and my generation <laughs> just a Careful little now, bit, simon just a, just a little bit older than you um <laughs> You know, just kind of used to seeing a band as a full band with, as you said, um, uh, Gabe, you know, the, the, the whole nine yards. And, and, and that gives you a visually as well as musically something to connect to on stage. And if it's just one or two people, it's if you're not used to it, 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 it does seem a very um, almost a little bit lonely up there from looking Ooh. down in the audience, looking back. Um, it's it's that, karaoke, basically, isn't it? Well, yeah. but it must be like, quite challenging for the artist to... Um, I don't know, to, to think, what, what am I, I'm singing my song, but uh, what, do I need to do something else to engage? I don't know what, what your th thought processes are, Ash, if you're singing up there and it's just you, you and one other person. Yeah, I mean, it can be difficult. I think Gabe and I are both quite energised on stage, like we're big running around doing a lot of things. So I think it's, you know, it's definitely viable to do just the, the two of you. A lot of people do now yeah. talk just a backing track, because I, I think that's a cost thing as well. It's like, you know, having an easy setup and, you know, if you're the opening act, not being too complicated. Right. Um, but I, I definitely agree. I think as an audience member to see that everything is happening live, like Gabe said, there's kind of a vulnerability in that where, you know, everything is happening right now. They could all absolutely, 
you know, this could go out the window and everyone could totally do a terrible job, you know, and that's, there's, that risk is kind of what makes live music so exciting, I think. So we've, we've been trying to do as much of that as we can and having a bit of stuff in the backing tracks for us is sort of about, about making the song still recognizable. Like I think a lot of our a certain sound or a certain something that we can't recreate live that is quite crucial to the song's right. sound. So the backing track definitely, you know, it's important to have that there so that people who are familiar with the songs hear that and they still feel like yeah. it's the song that they've heard on the radio. Um, but yeah, we, we try and make as much stuff live so that there's, there's that risk that everyone is connected to, you know, and, yeah. and I agree having more people, for, for the audience to look at. I, I don't want everyone looking at me the entire time. You know? like, <laughs> it's good. Look at some other stuff. Look at the lights. Look at the other players, you know. It's good. And, yeah, I think we try and translate what we like as audience members. You know, we think about that a lot because we're both such lovers of live music that we're trying to take ev- everything that we enjoy about it, we're trying to, you know, amplify in our own performance, I think. Right. Having said all that, Gabe, have you ever seen 21 Pilots on stage? Uh, no, but I've I've heard they're incredible. Um, I mean, they they kind of embody everything that I love about playing live, which is um, from what I've seen is that they kind of just own every decision that they make. They'll they'll you know the drummer goes out into the crowd on on a yeah, like yeah. a pallet or something. Yes, and, and the the singers like running around the stadium on on stilts and things like or on these big stands. Like it, if the kind of philosophy that I have is that if you if you can have enough confidence and on stage you can almost get away with anything um, as long as you're interacting with the audience as well. So, so, you know, I'm, Ash and I are running around, like we're, we're jumping on things as well. Um, the whole, the whole thing is, is, is a bit nuts, but yeah, we, we kind of hold it down. And, and at the end of the day, like you're performing because people want to be entertained. So you got to give them some entertainment. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, well, uh, Steve, anything more from you? No, I'm just thinking. What one day the, this this shall end, and we'll actually get to see that live. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. 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 Well, I also feel like because we've been waiting for so long, we're probably going to start scheming soon. And when we come back, it'll be like a 12 piece band with <laughs> strings and trumpets. I've always wanted a string section. I've always wanted a string section. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! We really look forward to that. Um, hey, well, thank you very much for talking to us on Crave today. Really appreciate it. Hope the rest of the lockdown goes well and is creative for you. And um, we're, we enjoyed the EP uh, on my conscience very much. And I hope everyone get, gets to listen to it. And all the best for the future. We look forward to seeing you live sometime. Thank you Thanks so much. So much. Thanks, guys. Uh-